Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and welcome to the Windows 11 installation. This will be a guide to help you through the installation process and if you haven't already, make sure to download the Windows 11 image and make sure that your computer meets the Windows 11 requirements in order to install Windows 11. If you need help with either of those, I do have videos. I'll post them in the description below. All right, to begin the setup, we are asked to select a language. Well, if you downloaded the Windows image, it already tells you to select a language for the ISO or image. So you really can't select anything from here besides the one you had already selected. So that's kind of a waste of time. But anyways, you can select a time and currency format if it's different than what is currently here and or a keyboard input method if it's different than the standard, which is US English. All right, you're gonna hit next once you're ready to move on. And then the install now button. Now the setup is starting real quick, so it'll take a few moments. One thing I'll mention is I don't currently have an internet connection. So I'm gonna be setting up a local account on this computer. You can go through the process of setting up a local account just as well, and then set up a user and log in with your Microsoft account. After fact, just a forewarning, if you have your product key for Windows 11 or 10, go ahead and put it in here. Otherwise, if you don't have it, you can use a demo for the time being by hitting I don't have a product key. Since I don't want to enter mine in, I'm just going to hit the I don't have a product key. Next, I'm asked to select which edition of Windows 11 I want to install. Well, I want to install the one that pertains to my Windows key. So I'll make sure to select whichever proper edition I want. Also, make sure that if you do have Pro, you do select Pro because you'll be missing out on features otherwise. So I'm going to select Home which is the one I have and press next. Following that, we have to acknowledge and accept the terms for Microsoft. If you've read through them, you're ready to accept, then you can hit next. And we have two options here, which is upgrade and install Windows or the custom install Windows only, which is the advanced version. I'm gonna click on this and here we go. So this can vary for different people, of course. If you're installing on an already existing, you might have multiple things in here, which in that case, make sure you're focused focused on which drive you actually want to install things on. I only have the one here. I know it's 128 gigabytes, so that all makes sense to me. If you have multiple partitions here, they might show up. That means that you already have something installed on that storage disk. What I'll tell you is if you select a specific storage disk here and you click next, you are deleting everything and anything off of that storage disk. So be warned, you will lose all the data on that storage disk. Make sure you select the proper one. Also, if you want to condense everything back down to one storage disk, let's say you do have storage with something on it, you can select the partitions specific to a disk and delete them if necessary. Otherwise, select your disk where you want to install Windows 11 and then press next. This will begin installing Windows 11 on your computer. Sit back because this might take a little while, anywhere between five minutes to an hour, depending on how fast your system is. One eternity later. And once Windows is ready, it will tell you that it's restarting. You can press restart now or let it time out. I'll just let it time out. Here we see the loading page for Windows 11. It might take a few moments to load things up. We're getting close to finishing up our installation. The computer might restart a couple times as the installation's going. Eventually you'll see a welcome screen here where we can continue the installation. So is this the right country or region for me? The United States, that is correct. So I'm gonna hit yes. Is this the right keyboard for me? We already set the keyboard, but it's asking again, select your proper keyboard. Mine is the standard US English keyboard. So I'm gonna hit yes. Do I want a second keyboard layout? Well, if you have a second keyboard that's different from your main one, add the layout, otherwise skip it. Let's connect you to a network. I guess at this point I do need a network connection. So I'll plug it in and give it a shot here in a moment. All right, and if Windows 11 detects a Wi-Fi network, you can select the Wi-Fi network, type in your password and username and hit uh, next. Otherwise, I have a wired connection here and mine shows up as network connected. So I'm ready to go by hitting next. Windows 11 is checking for more updates at this point. I'll give it a few moments to do so. Here's where we get to name our device. I'm gonna type in Savvy Nick for mine. You can call your computer whatever you'd like and then hit next. Following that, another restart may take place plenty of restarts during this installation process, more than I remember on Windows 10. Next, we're asked to sign in with the Microsoft account. If you have one, make sure to sign in at this point. This will get you extra services, of course. If you don't have an account, you can always create one through this link right here. So otherwise, you can sign in with a security key and there's other sign-in options as well. 
If I go back and just hit next, it'll tell me that I have to enter in an email address, phone number. But what I'm going to do instead of actually logging in with my Microsoft account, I'm going to disconnect my internet connection and just go back for a second. And then it's going to ask me who is going to be using this device. I'm just going to make a local account for now and then log in later. I'm going to use Savvy Nick here and hit next. Looks like they don't allow you to use the same user and computer name. That's fine. I usually do this in Linux. Anyways, I'm just going to do Savvy Nick 1 and hit next. Type in a password. That makes sense. Password for my local account. I'm going to confirm that password and then put in some type of security question. Pet's name, blah, blah, blah. Second one, blah, blah, blah. And third one, blah, blah, blah. All right. Things are going to finish up here in a moment once we've chosen our privacy settings. For me, you can select whatever you want. I turn everything off. I don't need any kind of tailored advertising or anything about my device or help finding it because it's a desktop. Hopefully I don't lose my desktop. All right, so I'm going to hit accept once I've turned everything off. And this should be the last few moments of the installation. We're greeted by a hello or hi. It says it's getting things ready for us. And it says here that this might take minutes. Do not turn off your PC. We won't. I typically like to create local accounts. Of course, you probably are using a Microsoft account and logging in, which makes a little more sense and it'll make things a little easier on you so you don't have to disconnect your network. We're almost there. And we sure are because we've been welcomed by the desktop environment here in Windows 11. Congratulations if you made it this far. You've successfully installed Windows 11 on your PC. Awesome job. We have the start menu already opened up for us, ready to get going and get started with a welcome to Windows tour if you want to take that. There's a few applications that are installed by default. Some of this information will be pulled in directly if you have your Microsoft account logged in. I don't. It's a local account called Savvy Nick one at the moment. Let's run through things real quick just to get a little bit of the feel here. I'm going to make things a little bigger so we can see things a little better. We have Microsoft Edge, our default web browser here, the recycle bin, like always. Everything's pretty much the same as Windows 10, but you'll notice a little bit of a change at the bottom of the screen where we now have our icons centered and our start menu is here on the left. Looks sort of similar to what we had before, but a little different rounded corners. A search bar up here at the top, apps in the middle. If we want to look through them, our user on the bottom left, if you click on the user, you can change account settings, lock and log and sign out. On the right hand side, you can shut down or restart the computer. And then you have a search mechanism here. If you click on this, you can search through your applications, document settings, and even more. If you want to work with multiple workspaces, you can by clicking this button here. It's multiple desktops. You can create a new one if necessary and drag and drop applications between them. Here are the new widgets that you'll get if your connection is working. Mine's having trouble loading because my internet connection is not working at the moment. There's a new chat app as well. You can launch and check that out. File Explorer looks very similar to what it did before. It is spruced up a little bit. You'll notice the ribbons changed at the top. It's minimal here and things look a little better in my opinion. You have Edge down here and the Microsoft Store to get you started. On the right hand side, much of what you're used to a taskbar with some icons here, including if you click on this, you'll get Bluetooth options, Wi-Fi options, sound volume control, and a few other things as far as accessibility goes. On the right hand side, you have notifications as well as the current date and time. And really that's about it. Again, congratulations on installing Windows 11. Have fun using it. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comment section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.